Hey guys, Kev here, and I'm back, sort of. I don't know, I probably haven't been gone long for you guys. For me, it's been a few days since I recorded anything. I have moved, I'm officially moved in. This is the, I guess, new setup for now. Um, I had this big mouse pad thing, but I don't know, it might reflect a little more light than I like, but we shall see how it goes. Anyway, um... <clears throat> we got some stuff from Olight here, and I thought I would uh, run through it with you guys. So, um, you get the usual stuff, like your um, little keychain lights, which are cool. Uh, I don't even think I opened this one because I've had a bunch of these. You just hang it on your keychain and twist it. Uh, it's mono output, so it has one um, setting. And then you twist it tight to uh, get it to turn on. And then you can twist it open to charge it. Hangs on your keys. Very cool. This one has a compass on it and 180 lumens. Oh, this one has two modes. Sorry. Uh, low, five, and then high, 180. So you tighten it a little bit. It goes on to five. You tighten it more. It goes on to 180, which is pretty cool. Um, they're probably giving these away uh, with certain purchases. Unless it's um, just a discounted on this one. It's a I1R2 Pro. And uh, it's very cool. It's got the uh, compass look on it. And uh, their sale this month is their OFAN Day sale. Um, I wish I could have made it to OFAN Day. That was last weekend. It was literally the weekend I was moving. Just, you know, didn't work out. So, um, yeah, that one's what you got there now this one to me is the coolest thing i got from them this month this is their o pry 2 and at first glance you know i kind of was like eh, it's, you know it's a pry bar sure but um this one's really cool and it has a feature on it that um i've actually had the concept of with um Devo Knives, and my buddy Chris, uh, Grady's Gear, shout out to Grady's Gear, I uh, hope he's doing well, and um, we wanted to do a pry bar at one point, and we were trying to figure out a way to store the bits, and we actually had the idea of putting a little door on the side, so having a thicker pry bar, and then having a door on the side, and you could slot them in. We just weren't sure how they would stack up, if it would rattle, all that kind of stuff, and uh, we had one OEM look into it, and they never got back to us, and we just have had a lot of stuff going on. We just never really followed up. And then I got this in the mail, and I was like, oh, shit, it does work. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. I'm not saying this is our concept or anything. I'm just saying we had a similar idea, and um, it looks like it's possible to do it. And the way we had it mapped out was to use detents on the door, and exactly what you have here is a little detent ball and it pops into a little detent hole here and that's what holds this door closed which is really cool so basically on the opry 2 here you have a uh flathead sort of uh slash pry bar right we have the patented uh bottle opener on here but the cool thing about this one is they actually thought it out. So for the most part, when you're looking at these pry bars, um, this grip is very uncomfortable because you're just right into this sharp pry bar or whatever. Sorry, bottle opener. But they thought it out here. They, um, they curve this a little. So it has a lip. It'll catch on your bottle. But it's not sharp. It, it doesn't really jack you up. And then, if you can't, hopefully you can see it, there's a little curvature right here. And that allows, at least for me, left-handed, allows my thumb to just drop right in there. And it fits much more comfortably in the hand than any other pry bar with a bottle opener I've ever felt. Right-handed, you would have the same thing there. Now, if you turn it this way right-handed, again, your index finger kind of goes into this little curvature and it gives you some good grip. I'm not sure how you righties, you know, how would you do that? I would do it like this, right? Or I would index and everything utilizes that little curvature. It's really slick that they thought of that. 
Uh, then you have this little uh, area here where you have your different wrench sizes or, or whatever, hex sizes, whatever you want to call it. Lanyard post back here. And then, of course, we have a... Uh, is there another one in there? Yeah. Then, of course, we have the um, driver. So I wanted to test this. But when I got this, it was before the move. And by the way, this sale, I believe, is already live and everything. So I'm a little late to the party. I'm really just trying to catch up right now. Um, but I wanted to test this with regular 4 millimeter bits and see if it works versus these double-sided ones they provide. Because usually... When you get stuff like this, their bits are dog shit, um, and they're not going to be very strong. They're going to, you know, warp and, and, and shit like that, deform really quickly. But, hey, you never know. Um, this one seems to be two-sided with some kind of a hex on it, and you can just slot it in there. And then um, there's a magnet at the bottom. There you go. It's slotted in. Took a second there. And then you can yank it out. But it's not going anywhere. So you have that one. You have what I would assume is a T6 and T8 setup. Like so. And then you have a Phillips and Flathead. Now they're very small. But should work on the type of stuff that I would use a driver like this for. Which is like battery doors for kids toys and stuff like that um so it works really good with that now let's see where did i store all of my let's see so we'll just grab the fulcrum here i'm still figuring out my setup but i have my um my like disassembly tools my little organizers are right in front of me here this arm is surprisingly shaky though. Not a big fan of that. Let's see if I can shirt it up a little. Let's see if that helps. Sorry guys. Work in progress. Um, so here is the regular, these are Weeha four millimeter bits. So it's gonna be the same thickness and everything. And let's see, are they the same length? Ah, that's how they made it work. So they're double-sided, but same length. So this should hold better. Oh. Okay, it did pop in there. Not bad. Comes out, no problem. I don't know how much work that magnet is doing, because it's pretty far down there. You see that? I don't know if you can. Let me grab my flashlight. So if you could see that magnet, it's pretty far down there. I'm sure there's a way for me to mark it on something, but oh, I don't know if that's telling us right there. Let's see. Yeah, just about right. So that is dropping into there. That's a pretty good distance, but it still seems like that magnet is deeper than that. So I don't know if that magnet is thing holding it in, but hey, it's held in. So no complaints for me there. Now, how will this fit in the door? Because this was the other thing. These, surprisingly, do not rattle. Um, they have a little bumper in there. So again, I'll get the flashlight. This is I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, but I'm very impressed with this pry bar. So bear with me. But you see a little bumper in there? Just a little piece of plastic or something. I don't know. But that thing will help immensely. Um, don't know if they... I don't see anything on the other edges. So nothing on the other edges and nothing here. So literally just that bumper down there. But these drop in surprisingly well. I really thought, you know, like when we were figuring this concept out on our own we really thought it was going to be a pain to get these in and out all of that now of course i have an issue with it right now can't get it in so one of these got bogged down so let's try it again there you go oh what's going on okay we're good so
I don't know if you can hear it. There's the slightest bit of sound. That may even be my watch. Maybe the slightest bit of sound, but not much at all, honestly. So now, let's test it. See, this is the kind of thing I was worried about with this. See, now we have one downside. We got one stuck in there. Probably have to give it a whack. Try not to stab myself. Ow. See, that's a problem. Can't get it out. So let's just see how it does with one of these in there. See if that changes anything. Hmm. Not really. I'd like to be able to pop three in there. So we can weasel it out with one of these. <laughs> Get out of the bird force. <laughs> All right, it's not coming out. I don't know what to do. So there is a screw here. So here we go. Let's um. Let's figure this out because you guys are here with me figuring this out. I had no issues with this until right now. I don't know if I put that one in weird or something, but let's see what happens when we unscrew this. Is there a way to like, okay, what is that? This is a plate. Is that how they secure the, um, I don't know if that's how they secure the magnet in there. Or what? What is that piece right there? I don't know what that's for. But I don't think it's doing anything right now. It still locks on that detent, so I don't know. It's like a little tab, maybe. Helps lock it in. Oh! Look at that. What is this? Oh, it's a detent. What the heck? What is that doing? This still is popping into place here. Feels a little different, but it's still working. It has nothing to do with the magnet. Oh, shit. I get it. So, I guess that's a magnet. Okay. I guess that is a magnet in there, but there's also a detent in there. So, this is a little ball, right? It doesn't, you know, um, spring or anything, but watch. Drop that in, and then it just has an, another little piece to keep it in place. And then, just bear with me. I'm learning as you learn. So pop that in. Now this covers it. Okay. The screw, obviously. Ugh. The screw keeps... Keeps that in place. Okay. And I don't know if any of you saw it when I lit the flashlight down there, but the ball is right there. See the little detent or whatever you want to call it, the little ball sticking out and then the magnet. I don't think there is a magnet in there. I think that's just a hole. It almost looks like a thread. I can see threads almost. I don't know what that does. Maybe it just allows this piece to go deeper in there i don't know but when you hear that that's passing that ball it has nothing to do with a magnet in there that's why i was saying this felt like it was going 
not as deep as that magnet, but it's because it's hitting that ball and locking it into place. That's what locks it into place. It's really smart. Okay. So we have that. We just... Uh, I should have a little... I usually keep a brass rod. There it is. Hopefully I can fish it out with this. I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know what happened in there, but doesn't seem to be any way of getting it out. show you oh i see looks like the flathead got wedged see that flathead got wedged in there so maybe i can go around it Oh, all right. So this got wedged like that going in, if that makes sense. So like, ooh, where is it? It got stuck like this, just like perfectly stuck. So I would probably try not to put that one in uh, first. So let's see, let's drop in two of these. So obviously if you put two in, you're going to get tons of rattle, right? Do I have any extras? I did, but I think they're in my bit thing. Which, where is that? Down here. Yep, here's one. All right, so here's the third one. I just want to see. So that's three of the regular kind of Weeha. Okay. A lot more space in there and rattle potential. Can you stack them any which way you want? Yes. Okay. So that answers one question for us. But, oh, no. Um, but if you use their bits and you have all three in there, and you don't shake them out like a doofus. Just this one keeps getting stuck. And that's why I was like, there. Nothing. So, interesting. Okay. Uh, what do I have here? A flathead? Or a, um, a Phillips and a T6. So, what I need is a T8 and a Phillips. There we go. Even though I never carry this, it is one of the better pry bars you can get. Okay, so that's the pry bar. I apologize for the super long section on that, but I really like this thing. Um, I think I just put that one in weird. I, I could probably put these in a hundred times, right? And not have that happen again, right? It was, you know, it just got dropped in the, a weird way or something. So I'm not going to hold it against it. But it also has a nice clip that works really well. So downsides on this one, it's a little bit thicker than your average pry bar, right? Like here's the fulcrum. It's going to be a little bit thicker. Not much, but definitely a little bit thicker to accommodate that. Um, I don't think it'll mess up the strength at all. It also has a ruler here, so you have 0 to 8 centimeters and 0 to 3 inches, which is cool. So, anyway, that is the O-Pry 2. 
Um, and then we have the Olight Baton 3 Pro. Um, so this is very similar to my Baton Pro. This is a Baton Pro in titanium. This is a Baton 3 Pro. So version 3, I guess, of it. And um, it's smaller, obviously. You can see it's smaller. Still got similar layout switch here, right? Double tap for turbos. Back. Oh, that one. Wait. Yeah, there you go. So it's the usual suspects on this one. Um, you're going to have a moonlight. You're going to have a low at 15. You're going to have a medium at 120 lumens, a high at 600, and then drop down to 120, and then turbo at 1500 and 600. I believe this one caps out at 2,000. Yeah, I see it. 2,000 lumens. So this one's a little bit stronger. I don't know if it's this is the third generation or the third, like, size. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's a thing. You can definitely see the difference. But this has been my trusty flashlight for, I mean, years at this point, I think. I mean, two years at least. I got this from my buddy Rodney. Shout out to Rodney Pearson. And it has lived at my desk for years now. Um, I have possibly abused it. My daughter has abused it as well. I also have a Warrior 3, I believe, that I keep. Uh, or Warrior Mini 3, I'm not sure. And I keep that at one of my, my other desks over there. Um... Now that I have two, which is awesome. But this is very cool. Same kind of idea. Magnetic tail cap, uh, but not switch, obviously. Charges down here. Cool pattern. Topo pattern on here. I believe this is going to be a limited edition. Yep. Enhanced power and upgraded experience. It's going to come with your Olight 18650, 3200 mAh, 3.6 volt battery. Uh, again, you're going to charge it with the standard Olight charger, and you're going to get the capabilities that we talked about here on the back. But I did not carry this. Um, well, cut the worst possible thing ever. Everything falls out. Hey, you get all this cool stuff with it. It's like a stand. That's pretty cool, actually. Let's see if I can get it all back in here. Uh, no, I didn't even know it was there. I mean, I knew, but I didn't want to know. Come on, baby. We can do this. We can do this. We can do it. Ugh, that thing is. I get it. It's tough. It's tough being a flashlight. So sorry. Oh man. All right, I'll deal with this off camera. Anyway, you got that. And then lastly, we have a new uh, knife. This is the Metal 2. This is a button lock. So with this, you will get a coin. Okay, get the O knife coin. Metal 2. So for those of you collecting these, and then I did take this out and play with it a little bit. So this one is in good shape. The spring on it is a little weaker than I like, but it's not like bad, right? Um, I also think the knife is a little smaller than I'm used to, but um, I actually like the overall design of the knife. Drop point blade. Um, the micarta is pretty cool. Reversible clip, which is nice. Um, and the um, billboarding is limited a little bit here. They sla oh, they slapped it on the clip. Sorry, I didn't see that. Metal 2 right there. And then a code. Um, I do wish they would hide some of that stuff. 154CM. Push button works. It's got a little bit of the Kaiser rattle. I don't know if you can hear it. I can feel it when it drops. But 
Not bad. I like the pivot. Interesting pivot. There's a little folder here. I can flick it left-handed. Now, most of you are right-handed, so I don't know what that's for. You know, you can't really. I'm sure somebody could, but um, I guess it's aesthetic. But if you're a lefty, hey, we can flick it. Um, large glove size hand. I can maybe sneak on all four, but I'm really trying. If I choke up like this, I can easily do it, but then I'm up on the blade. Um, yeah, it's a little stout. It's a cool knife. The, the design doesn't really like, I don't know, overwhelm me with, um, uniqueness feels like another knife you know um is that a bad thing not always you know um that's what a lot of people like um so hey but yeah uh once you get used to the flipper tab it's actually pretty good i think i was just pushing it and pinching it before but if you flip it it's good and if you push button it it's good as well um, reverse grip, Friday night gas stations. Okay. Um, I'm kind of pushing myself to the edge here and then, you know, you could save a Slurpee with it if you had to, but, um, yeah, it's cool for sure. I like it. Not my favorite O knife ever, but, um, I do think it's a good one. My favorite O knife ever is probably this one. Um, I showed this one in a video recently. This is the O-Knife uh, Heron R1. This is an obuy.com exclusive, I think. Um, they have a sale running as well. They're usually concurrent with Olight, so check that out as well. Um, you can use the same code for both Olight and Obuy, Lefty EDC, to save 10% off your orders. Some of the sale items obviously don't work because they're already on sale, but any other time that code will work. This Heron R2 or R1 is amazing. I don't know what it is about this knife that just makes me love it, but there's just something about it. The spring is perfect. It pops. The ergos feel really good in my hand. I actually like you know, the deserty colorway that I never like. I never like this. But I love it on this knife. So there's just something special about the Heron R1. So check that out. But you also have the metal too if you like smaller knives. Um, so anyway, metal 2. Opry 2. This is probably the star of the show for me on uh, this sale. You have the, uh, the little Olight Center. And then we have the, uh, falling apart out of the box, Baton Pro, Jesus, God. Baton 3 Pro, limited edition. It says CW there. Somebody want to tell me what that means? Is that the type of bezel we're talking about? Um, CCT 5000K says that in a couple of places. No, then it says 6500K. Then it says... G L C R I 70. What does all of that mean? Can I like adjust? Is it like depending on what you do, you can change the I don't I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys, but let me know. I would love to hear it. I know I'm not a flashlight guy. If Marceau watches this, please explain that to me. I would love it. Thank you guys. Check out Olight. Check out the links down below. Sorry for being a little late on this one um just you know getting back into things and i love you guys truly dearly and um i hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic day and i will catch you later